Welcome back. I'm Brian Hayes, and this is Automation of the Week. Every Tuesday, we release a new video that shows you step-by-step -step how to build out an automation in Salesforce or Pardot. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Flow to create a roll-up summary field. No master detail relationship is required. If you don't know what a roll-up summary field is, take a look at our video on that topic in the description below. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a common problem when people are dealing with record triggered flows that are triggered when a record is deleted. So make sure that you see that so you don't make the same mistake that I did when I was first learning this. So our example today is let's say we want to count up the number of contacts related to an account. We can't use a roll up summary field for this because contacts and accounts don't actually have a master detail relationship. But the principles we're gonna go through today are useful in a lot of different situations. In order to make this happen, what we need to do is first create a field on the account for us to store the number of the number of contacts for that account, just a number field, and then we'll create a flow. But we have to consider all the different ways we might want this flow to be triggered. So for example, when a contact is created, we would then want to count the contacts and update the account with the number of contacts. But we wanna do that also when the contact is deleted so that we have a up-to-date number on our account record, just like a roll-up summary field would do. But there's another scenario. When a contact is moved from one account to another, we're gonna have to run this flow again for each of those accounts, the one that it used to be a part of and the new one that we just moved it to. So let's get started. Step one, go ahead and click on the object manager and go to the account object to create that number field where we're gonna store the count of contacts. Go to fields and relationships, and you can see here, I've already created a field called number of contacts, but you can recreate that field by hitting the new button. Make sure that you choose number, then hit next. Go ahead and give it a name. We don't need any decimal places in this case. And then choose your field level security and add it to the page layout if you want it to be visible. Once you've got your number field created, come back to the quick find here and search for flow. And this is where we're gonna create our flows. And we've got two options. We can either create a flow that is gonna be schedule triggered. So let's say on the first of every month, we want to count up all of the contacts related to accounts and update all the accounts. Or we can create a record triggered flow. And this would require us to actually create four separate flows. One that has our core logic in it, one that's triggered by when a contact is created, one that's triggered when a contact is deleted, and one that's triggered when a contact is changed from one account to another. Sounds a little complicated. This is typically the most efficient way to do things though, because with the schedule triggered flow, it might be easier to create because we can just create one flow to count all of those contacts and update the accounts, but this is gonna have to run across you know, all accounts pretty much every month or every week whenever we want that to be updated. And in between those updates, we'll have incorrect data in Salesforce. So a little easier to set up, but not quite as valuable as the record triggered approach, which I'm gonna show you how to do today. So before we actually create a record triggered flow though, we're just gonna create an auto launch flow. So in order to save us some effort, we can create the main logic in our flow as a subflow. And then we can call that subflow from record triggered flows that we'll create next. So choose auto launch flow, hit create. And then on the left-hand side, click the drawer over here where you can see resources and click new resource. We're gonna create a variable that's gonna house our account ID. Go ahead and write account ID in there. Data type will be text. We'll make sure that this is available for input so that we can pass that account ID into our subflow. Go and create another new resource as well. This will be a variable too. And this is gonna be account. So we're gonna use this to count the records for it. Under data type, make sure you choose number and then decimal places, that can be zero since we're not gonna have you know, 0.5 contacts or anything like that. And the default value, we could set that as zero. Most of the time, that's what we would do, but I'm actually gonna leave it blank for now and make it available for input. So we're gonna set this when we call the subflow as well. And you'll see later when we create the record triggered flow on delete, you know, why this is so va valuable. Go and click done. And the next step now is for us to get all the contacts related to that account ID that we pass into the flow. Then we're gonna loop through them, we're gonna count them, and then we're gonna update the account. So hit the plus button, go ahead and select get records. We'll call this get contacts. The object we want is a contact object, and we want all contacts where their account ID is equal 
to our variable account ID because we pass the account ID into this flow when we trigger it later. We don't really care about the sort. We definitely want to get all of those contacts, but we don't need all of the fields. So choose the second option here where you can choose which fields to save and then Salesforce will do the rest for you. We don't actually need any other fields other than the ID. So I'm just going to leave it like this, but we're recreating the functionality of a roll-up summary here. So you might have a use case where you want to add up the amount of opportunities or some other number field. You want to do a sum or an average or some calculation like that. Well, in that case, you might want to add additional fields here so they're available to you in the flow and, and in your logic. But we'll just leave that blank for now and hit done. Next step is to loop through those contacts so that we can count them. Select a loop from the elements area. For the collection variable, we just have one option. That's contacts from our get contact step. And it doesn't matter if we go first item to last item or reverse. Hit the plus sign within the loop and choose assignment. Here we'll say add one to the counter. Our variable is going to be our count variable. That's our number. And instead of equals, change that to add and then put the number one in the value. So for every record that was in that collection, so for every contact that we got from our get contact step, we're going to add one to that counter. And then after that last step here, we can update the account. So go ahead and add an update step, call this update account. We'll specify the conditions in order to identify the right record. And we want the account whose ID is equal to our variable account ID. The field that we're gonna update is the custom field that we created, number of contacts. And the value we'll put in there is our count field. Go and hit done and hit save. I'm going to call this subflow count account contacts. Now to test this, click the debug button, and then we can pass an account ID and a starting value for the count into our inputs right here. To get an account ID, go back into the user side of Salesforce and pull up an account record. Here we have Herb Ertlinger's winery. Here is an account with four contacts related to it. Copy the ID from the URL bar. Come back here and paste that value into the account ID field. And where it says count, we're going to put zero in there as our starting point. Then each contact that it loops through, we're going to add one for each of those contacts. And you can see they're available here because we said they were available for input. They're accessible outside of the flow. Then click run. We can see it looped through successfully. On the right hand side, our last step was to update the records and it found four different contacts. It counted four of them. That looks good. Okay, now let's consider our triggers. So click activate on this flow so it's available to us in the other flows we're about to build. And then hit the Mac button in the upper left to go back to your list of available flows. Click new flow, and now we'll create our record triggered flow. The object that we want to trigger this is gonna be a contact, and we want this to run whenever a contact is created. So we'll leave that first option selected. And we do actually want to add a condition as well. We just want to make sure that an account ID is not null. So select account ID under condition requirements. The operator is null, and then the value will be false. We just want to make sure that there's an account related to that contact, because if there isn't, you know, our flow isn't going to have anything to count and won't have anything to update. And we'll leave this on actions and related records, then click done. Hit the plus button to add an element to trigger a subflow. And under our subflow, we can add our subflow dash count account contacts. I'm going to call this count contacts. And just like in the debug window, we can pass in an account ID and a number. So let's include both of those. We're not going to paste anything in here. Instead, we want to use a variable that's built into this flow. If you scroll down, you can see our dollar sign record here. That's our global variable for the contact that triggered the flow. And from there, we can get the account ID field. And then for the count, just choose zero like we did in the debug. Click done, hit save. We'll call this contact dash when created, count all account contacts. Hit save and activate. We can test that in our system here by creating a new contact. We've got four of them here. If we create a new one, that should then update our account and put the number five in the custom field that we created. Call this test contact. You can see it's related to our account name, so it's going to meet our conditions. Hit save. And now if we check details, we have a number five right here under number of contacts. Okay, that looks good. Let's go on to our next flow, our next triggering flow. 
So if you come back to the flow that we just activated, you can click Save As and then create a new flow. That's our button over here on the right. So I'm gonna copy our flow label, select a new flow, paste that back in, but this is gonna run uh, whenever the contact is updated from one account to the next. So not when created, but when contact is reparented, we'll say. Count all account contacts, that looks good. Click save. And now let's change the start trigger here. So we still want it to run when a contact is, is updated, not when it's created. So choose updated as an option. And we do also want account ID to not be null, that's good. But now for our conditions, we don't want to use the is null operator for this. We want this to run whenever the account ID is changed. So choose account ID and then select is changed and choose true for the value. We'll have this run as actions and related records and then click done. So go to your subflow element here you can see here, it's going to pass the records account ID into our flow, just like the created record triggered flow we made and start with a count of zero, that looks good. And then let's actually duplicate this. So select it, hit copy, and then hit the plus button right underneath it and paste it. Go ahead and edit it now so we can change the name. Instead of copy of count contacts, let's say count contacts from old account. So you have to remember, this is running when a contact is reparented. So it had one account and now it's been put underneath a new account and we need to run our subflow for both of those accounts uh, so that the number of contacts is accurate for both of them. So we don't wanna pass the current account ID. We actually want to pass the previous account ID into this subflow. But to do that, click on the account ID field here and scroll down and we actually have another global record variable called record underscore underscore prior. So these have all the values of that record, you know, before it was saved. So select that and now choose account ID here. We're going to be running that subflow, but for the last account ID, not for the one that we just updated it to. And the count can stay zero as well. Hit done and hit save. Okay. So we now have our record triggered flow that is going to trigger our subflow twice. Go and click activate on that. And then we can test by looking at our account here, where if we look at the winery, we know we've got four people currently under this account. But if I move Betty here to a different account, let's say we put her under Alexis Rose Communications and hit save, we should get the number three on the winery account. Click details, there it is. And then let's look at Alexis Rose Communications and see what number we got there. We've got three contacts here. And we should have three there as well. That looks good. And then I'll move my test contact back underneath the winery just to further confirm that everything's working as expected. Now we've got two contacts at Alexis Rose Communications. Under details, it says two. And if we go back to the winery, we've got four people under the winery and details says four. Okay, so that's working well. So now for our last flow. The last flow is when a contact gets deleted. If we delete one of these contacts, we wanna update the account and decrease that number of contacts by one. So we can do that by coming back to our flow here, go and hit save as, and let's save this as a new flow, not a new version. So we'll put in a, a good name there and we'll say contact when deleted count account contacts and hit save. I'm gonna delete our second subflow here. We're not gonna need it. Go and click on the start element and change this to when a record is deleted. Again, we'll leave that account ID is null equals false. And then notice here at the bottom, this is gonna run before the record is deleted. So this is where you can get into trouble and click done. Because this is running technically before that contact is deleted, when we do our get to get all the contacts related to the account, this contact is still gonna be in that get. So we're going to be overstating by one, the number of contacts on that account because it's not actually deleted yet. So we can compensate for that by clicking into our subflow here and changing the count from zero to negative one. That way we're not starting from zero, we're starting from negative one to compensate for the fact that when we get all the contacts, this one's still gonna be there, even though it's just about to be deleted. But the flow, as it said in the start element, is running before that deletion has actually happened. 
And that's it. That's the trick. Change that count to negative one, and that'll make up for the fact that this is running before that deletion has happened. Click done, hit save, activate, and let's see how this works. We've got our four contacts underneath our winery. Right now, the number of contacts is set to four. And if we choose our test contact here, let's go ahead and delete them. That should trigger our flow to run our subflow. And then under details, four should change to three. There it is, number of contacts equals three, and our deletion has gone through. So I know that was a lot of flows, but you've now learned how to create a roll-up summary field without needing a master detail relationship. And that's gonna come in handy in a lot of different scenarios. In addition, you can also see the utility of using a subflow and making some of those variables available for input. I hope you found this lengthy tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and take a look at some of our courses at academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.